The influence of jitter on sound in a digital audio system can be immense. Harshness, loss of deep lows, sibilance problems, limited and out of focus stereo imaging, it's a bit like a heavy hangover. They say that Elka Celsius help against hangovers and that the remedy helps against jitter. I will only test the latter if you don't mind. The remedy is a small box measuring 87 by 87 by 30 mm. On one side are the gold plated coax and optical inputs the power supply input and the optical output. On the opposite side there is a gold plated RCA and BNC, both offering the same digital output signal but each properly galvanically separated by transformers. Two switches offer power and input selection. The top has the Wired for Sound W logo cut out, the acrylic covering beneath it gets illuminated when the unit is locked on the incoming digital signal. A switching mode wallboard pro provides the DC power. As always you can skip the tech by going to the timecode above. The aluminum housing holds two small PCBs that are mounted using the connectors. The three main components on the main print are a Motorola microprocessor, the Burr Brown SRC 43921 sample rate converter and the Crystec high precision clock oscillator. These are true quality components. The Burr Brown sample rate converter I have also seen in, for instance, equipment by Musical Fidelity and Electro Compagnit. The second print holds the outputs and switches and here we see that the RCA and BNC outputs are decoupled individually by transformer. The black box is shown here. The remedy buffers the input signal and up or down samples it to 96 kHz 24 bit using a very nearby mounted quality clock oscillator. The remedy is connected between a digital source and a DA converter. Let's say between a streamer and a DA converter. When you play 44.1 kHz 16 bit audio files, they get upsampled to 96 kHz and 24 bit. Sound wise the unit is impressive. I used a Raspberry Pi with a Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus transformer headboard and a DS booster power supply directly connected to the Digi Plus board. This drove the Cord Mojo DAC in my 3000 Euro set too. When the Remedy, used with the standard switching mode power supply, was inserted, the stereo image opened up a lot further, resolution over the entire band was improved and especially vocals sounded so much more natural. I also tried a third generation Apple TV. When used directly connected to the Cord Mojo, it gives a rather poor result, but over the Remedy the result was equal to that of the Raspberry Pi Digi Plus and Remedy combo. For those who think this is magic or snake oil, the sample rate converter inside the Remedy upsamples the signal to 96 kHz, making it easier for the DA converter since the reconstruction filter has one octave more before it starts filtering. This part won't be that important for the Mojo given its superior filtering. But the sample rate converter also reclocks the signal using the high quality Crystec clock oscillator that is mounted very close to the sample rate converter and thus has firm control over the signal. This is important for the Mojo since it is built for portable use and has a digital input that is relatively sensitive to jitter and to earth problems. It is not a bad design. It's just designed to be used with portable gear. But offer it a very clean, well clocked signal and it becomes shockingly good. The Remedy does just that. The sample rate converter and clock generator make a very well timed signal and the transformer in the output offers galvanic separation. Replacing the simple wallboard by the S Booster linear power supply didn't improve the measurement and did have a tiny positive effect on the sound quality. In some cases I could hear a small 
further improvement on the voices, but that was it. The Wired for Sound Remedy clearly does what it promises to do. Reduce jitter to a very low level. A reduced jitter does make a DA converter produce a clearly better sound. That was already obvious in my set 3 and in my set 1 it would even convince a very skeptic person, in both cases using the same setup as above, Raspberry Pi, Digi Plus, S Booster and Mojo. So should you go online and buy it immediately? Well that depends. First, this solution only works with SPDIF and not with USB. Wine for Sound does have a USB version as well, but that's not reviewed here. Second, if your source has almost no jitter, there is no point in trying to reduce it. Third, all music is up or down sampled to 96 kHz 24 bit. That might be a ok for people using equipment and or music files that are limited to 96 kHz, but buying and playing 192 kHz files through a 96 kHz system might be hard to explain. Even in those cases, the jitter reduction does more good than higher sampling rates. And then there is the price, 399 US dollars. For slightly over 500 dollars you buy a complete streamer from Blue Sound or Relic and the like. Wouldn't that be a better choice then? Well, both are fine streamers for the money, they really are, but if you have for instance a Squeezebox Touch or a Raspberry Pi with Digi Plus board set up and you use an external DAC, the remedy might lift them to a higher quality audio than the ready to use choices. But only if the DAC is better than in those players. A good digital interconnect is used and so on. I expect a lot of questions about whether one should buy the remedy or not and I wouldn't have an answer that fits all. It basically is quite simple. If your digital player has average or worse jitter, inserting the remedy will drastically reduce it. Whether you will hear that? Well, jitter is a large part of what makes bad digital audio sounds like bad digital audio, so solving that does improve the sound quality. My guess is that it will improve almost any digital output of a device below 1500 euros or dollars, with the emphasis on guess. The build quality of the Remedy is fine, using great components, connectors and a sturdy metal housing. It also comes with 5 years warranty and not to forget it does what it promises to do, drastically reduce the jitter of a poor digital signal. At a price of $399 it's a bargain. Buyers outside of the US should realize that US prices always are excluding sales tax and there will be some handling costs and import duties too. I had to pay a 105 euros of which about 86 euros VAT and 6 euros import duties. VAT differs per country, handling cost, 13 euros in my case, can greatly vary per carrier. But also on that price, about 465 euros, I can still recommend the remedy wholeheartedly when you do need to fight jitter in your system. It is far more effective than Alka Celsius for a hangover, so I'm told. So if you're in for a sober advice, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. You can also post questions but please don't ask me for buying advice. View my About Questions video to find out why. I have posted more information below this video and if you like this video please consider supporting the channel through, through Patreon and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.